hey what's going on youtube this is marcus and i am back for another video um i know it's been a while i just really haven't been having anything to talk about especially since the shows that i normally would review are on hiatus right now but i did want to come on and do this movie review real quick last night i watched um the breakthrough movie um the movie about the boy that had drowned in the lake and the mom prayed and he came back to life it was a really, 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 really good movie. So I'm going to try to do, get into it without giving too much away. Um, but this video may have a, some spoilers. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely encourage you to see it. For those of you all who consider yourselves Christians or spiritual or what have you, I think that it's a very, very good movie. I think it's very inspirational, very empowering, very thought-provoking, very stirring. Um... It's definitely one of those movies that will make you reevaluate yourself, especially when it pertains to the area of prayer. So, I'm just going to skip past the beginning and get right up into the, the good part. So, the only person, the only two people in the movie that I know their names is the little boy who drowned and the pastor. Um... So the boy's name who drowned, his name was John. And there was a scene where him and two of his friends, they were playing on um, on over this lake that had frozen over because the movie takes place in the wintertime and there was ice over the lake. And so they're out, you know, out playing on over the lake or whatever. And this man comes out and says, you know, you guys need to get off that ice. It's not safe. And, you know, they're like, okay, pretty much blew him off. Like, we out here having fun. Leave us alone. And so... Next thing you know, all three of the boys fall through the ice. Um, you know, and there was a struggle to try to get climb back on top of the ice, but the ice was very, very thin. And so the more they tried to climb out of the lake, the more the ice kept breaking. Um, what ended up happening was that John, in, 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 in the midst of him trying to help one of his friends out of the ice, he gets knocked back into the water um, and he goes down. And so... You know, luckily for them, the guy that had warned them about, you know, told them to get off the ice, he just happened to still be around and he seen, you know, them struggling over. So he calls 911 and they send, you know, they call the fire department out, the ambulance and whoever. So these two men that were part of the a part of the fire department, they put on these, like, I guess you can start call them like hot suits or like suit, basically something that would keep them from freezing to death and they had these long poles that they were with like a hook on it that they stuck down inside the water to try to find the boy because they mentioned that the, the lake was like 12 feet deep so obviously it would have been too deep for them to try to go down and find him without having the proper um like scuba equipment or, or you know diving equipment or whatever but eventually it got to the point where they were about to give up. It was one black guy and one white guy. And the black guy hears a voice that tells him to go back. And in his mind, he was thinking that it was his captain telling him to go back. Um, so he goes back and he continues searching. They were able to find the boy and pull him up and whatever. So later on in the scene, the firemen are back at the station and they're having a conversation. And the guy is like, you know, the only reason what, you know, what made me keep going because I heard you tell me to go back. And the chief was like... I didn't say anything with you. I was busy trying to, you know, make sure that the other two boys were taken care of. And the white guy that was with him in the water says, well, you know, I didn't hear him say anything. And I was right there with you. Um, but, you know, obviously throughout the movie, we kind of find out that that was the voice of God telling him, to, to, you know, to, to not stop until you found that boy. So the mother gets a call from one of her friends and lets her know that the boy is in the hospital. You know, the boy from the time that he fell underwater to the time that they pronounced him pretty much pronounced him dead was like 45 minutes to an hour so by the time the mama got there they had pretty much just gave up and was like you know we're gonna because they did everything trying to you know using the resuscitator machine and trying to you know shock his you know shock him or whatever but you know they were just like you know we just gonna give up so when the mama got there they gave the mom you know her alone time to go in there um now the daddy i think was at work she called the father and he, you know he hadn't got there yet but she went in there and prayed and cried out to god and next thing you know the the, the boy starts gets getting the pulse and so the doctors rush back in there 
you know, checking to make sure everything was going right. And so he ends up getting transferred to this other hospital because the doctor at this particular hospital, he was supposed to be like a specialist. And, um, but the crazy thing is, when she went and sat and talked to him, he's supposed to be a specialist, but he was talking really, you know, doubtful and talking really negative. And so, and she basically was like, girl, you know, I don't have time for no negativity. You know, you say, you, you know, you're the best. You're supposed to be an expert. You do what you can do and we're going to let God do the rest. Um, and so it, it became this whole thing. You know, the mom was diabetic. And so, it, you know, she was having, you know, struggling trying to keep her blood sugar um regulated in the midst of running off of no sleep she wasn't really eating like she was supposed to be you know she was becoming really um irritable and cranky you know she went off on the doctors at one point because they were standing li literally standing in the boy's room standing talking over him like pretty much saying that he wasn't gonna make it and she was like girl just because he in a coma he can still hear what you're saying and so when you in this room right here you're gonna speak positive you're gonna speak life over him we not come doing that negative stuff um and you know and it had gotten to the point where it was on the news and you know people all over the city were printing now first of all this was a, a like a small town so pretty much everybody in the town knew each other and you know it had got to the point where literally the whole city was praying for him the children in the school was praying for him the firemen was praying for him you know there was a scene where i think they were like in a bar or something you seen them praying for him um because it had pretty much got to a point where Everybody had pretty much given up on him except for the doctor and except for the pastor. Now, what was interesting about the pastor is that in the beginning of the movie, the mom didn't really care for the pastor because the pastor was a little young. Um, and apparently he he was doing, you know, he was one of those ones that was trying to get young people interested in the church. And so he would do like gospel rapping in the church. And the mom came from an old school background. Y'all know how them old school folks do. A lot of the things that, uh, you know, churches and pastors do today are what you would consider unorthodox um but but throughout the movie they were able she started to come around to him and you know their relationship got real strong and their bond became real strong um you know because he was actually one of the ones that was in the hospital room with them when the boy finally woke up um Eventually, the mom got to the point because the mom, even though the mom was praying and believing God that he was going to bring, was going to heal her son and bring him back to life, she was still trying to control the outcome of the situation. And she had got to the point where she said, you know, was praying and told God, you know, you know, it's, I can't do anything about the situation at this point. It's in your hands. So whatever you want to do, it's in your hands. Whatever your will is for John and for me and my husband, you know, I accept and I surrender to your will. Um... So, in the midst of this, she goes back to the hospital room and the doctor basically tells her that none of the, because they had put him on this medicine to pretty much, they put him in a, in a coma after, you know, after he came back the first time and, you know, they found the post, they put him in a coma and, you know, the doctor was basically telling her like, you know, this medicine's not working, this is not working. So she said, well, why don't you wake him up? If you telling me that the, all this stuff that you have him on to put him in the coma is not working, then wake him up. So the doctor tells her the next day we're going to wake him up. So the next day they go through the procedure of doing what they need to do to take him off the breathing machine, yada, yada, yada. He ends up breathing on his own. Um, and so eventually the mama goes up to him and she's talking to him and encouraging him like, you know, son, you got to fight for this. You got to come back to us. Um, pretty much it was one of those whole things like, you know, run away, don't go into the light basically. And so he eventually jump, wakes up, comes back to life, you know, and the sound went throughout the whole town. Everybody, um, you know, was made aware that he had woke up, um, you know, it was even a scene where the mom had went to sleep and she woke up and found the 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 fight. The black guy was actually in like standing in the room watching him or whatever. Because one of the things that the black guy struggled with was he didn't believe that God was real, um, and so he was having a hard time accepting the fact that it was God that told him to go back and save the little boy. Now, um, 
and like I said, in the midst of this, the son, you know, when she, the mom seen, when he when he realized the mom saw that he was there, he, you know, he tried to run. And mama was like, you know, you know, thank you for saving my son. And he was like, well, I was just doing my job. And she, he said that I hope that he's going to be okay. Now, what I didn't know that there was actually a book that was written about this movie. Um, I know that the movie was based off a true story, but I didn't know that there was a book written about the movie. Now, my mom was able to listen to the book on the on the little audible thing through Amazon, and she said that the book goes into a lot of a lot more details than the movie did, which is you know typical of most movies. There are a lot of things that are that, that are missed out on that are you know that are mentioned in the book because you know sometimes if you try to get every single detail, the movie is going to be super duper long, like the Titanic or something of that nature. Um, and so I would have I would have liked to see the storyline of the black fireman. I would have liked to see that progress a little bit more. You know, did he ever come to the realization that God was real or whatever have you? Um, because at the end of the movie, when the when the boy, when the family finally came back to church, the church was pretty much filled with, you know, everybody. The pastor invited the family up on the church. Um, out up on the up on the pulpit, and the pastor had everybody to stand. You know, if you work with the fire team, the firemen stood up, the police people stood up, the EMT and the ambulance people stood up, or the EMS, excuse me, the people that worked at the hospital stood up, the people that was praying for him at school stood up, the people that prayed for him at home stood up, the people that prayed for him in the church stood up. So pretty much, the church was so full of people that um, of people that was praying and believing that he was gonna make it out of make it out of what he had gone through um i just thought that that was that was amazing i mean the movie i know i read on somebody's status that when they saw the movie and the scene where the boy came back to life that the whole theater went up into a praise and, and the reason why i say that it causes you to do some reflection and re reflecting and recollection is because when i watched the movie I thought about my own personal prayer life and I thought about my spiritual walk and I said, Lord, I want to have that type of power with you that I can, that, that I can perform miracles in your name. Now, I mean, now granted, you're not going to always have uh, opportunity is not going to always present itself where you can where somebody dies and you can pray and bring them back to life. But, you know, there are always situations that we can pray not only for ourselves, but pray for other people and watch God move on their behalf, whether they're struggling with sickness, whether they're struggling with some kind of oppression, you know, whether they're dealing with a mental issue or a physical issue or whatever the case may be. I want to be that type of person because I know and I know what God does when I pray for myself, but I want to be the type of person that when I pray for people that I can see God's hand moving in, in, in the lives of other people. I want to be that person that, I, that has the kind of power that I can lay, pray for somebody that's sick. And I'm not talking about something simple like a headache or they got a cold. I'm talking about something severe like somebody got cancer or somebody got arthritis or somebody is struggling with some kind of mental instability. I want to be have the power to pray for that type of issue and, and, and see God heal and deliver and set people free. Now, I know that that's going to take some discipline in myself because you can't be out here living a carnal life quote unquote and then expect to be powerful in the spirit it's going to you know a lot of you know it's going to take some fasting and some praying and some reading some word because another thing that i that one of my prayers was i want to be a, a mouthpiece for god and i'm not talking about standing behind a pulpit and preaching but i'm talking about i want to be able to if God gives me a word to somebody i want to be able to give that word to that person and be able to give it and speak it with clarity and speak it clearly in a way that that person can understand it and be able to receive it and not just speak the word but be able to see that word manifest in the life of somebody else and so like i said the movie was really 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 good i didn't want to get too deep i don't want to get too deep into it it's one of those movies that you really have to see for yourself but what i would say is when you go in with the movie go in with an open heart and an open mind to receive because i believe that it's a message for every, anybody who watches it there's there's something that you can take out of it and apply it to your own life god can give you a message for the through this movie the same way he gave me a message for my own life and so, if though, if you have seen the movie, give me your comments down below and tell me what you thought about it, you know, overall. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this was actually produced by Megan Good's husband, Devon Franklin, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, y'all, leave your comments down below. Be sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and share. 
Um, also, be sure to subscribe to my social media, which will be in the description box down below. Um, I, I'm going to try to come back with some other videos. Like I said, I haven't really been having anything to talk about. Um, I, 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 um, I don't know exactly when Greenleaf is coming back because that, 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 that'll probably be the next show that I review. So if, you know, when that comes back, unless there's something else that catches my attention that I want to talk about, um, the next review that you will see would be from um, Greenleaf. But anyway, I will talk to y'all later. Peace.